It's been a while since I've done one of these, so I am back with another five things to do in a lucid dream. Now do make sure you stick around right to the end because there might be a bonus six one that I thought up just now right when I was about to start recording for the video. And it's an idea that I think some of you guys are going to really, really love. So without further ado, number one, visit somewhere where the conditions in the real world wouldn't make it possible or at least wouldn't make it very easy. Like for example, the center of a volcano, an ice lake, the North Pole, perhaps even the center of the earth or the surface of the sun. And of course, you know, you can go to any of the planets, you can go to Mars, you can even go to the moon, you can float around in space. Basically, try to think of a place that you wouldn't be able to get to in the real world, either because you don't have the ability to go there right now, or because the conditions are just not really particularly hospitable to life. And that, that should be your next destination. Well, unless of course you're new to the channel or not yet subscribed, because then your next destination before you go there should be the subscribe button, then the bell icon, so you can stay up to date with my videos that come out all of the time. I've actually already got hundreds of videos on lucid dreaming on my channel, so be sure to check out some of those as well. Anyway, number two, go to a house or apartment that is completely different from yours. Whether it's smaller and more cozy, whether it's larger and more spacious, whether the furniture is way more expensive and interesting, or whether it's just your dream home that you'd like to have. Whatever the case, go to this different home and lay down on the bed there and think about the weird fact that you're currently laying in two beds in different places. That can be a really mind-boggling experience. This is a favorite one of mine, actually. When you do this, you have this strange sensation of just knowing that you're also laying in bed right now, and if you were awake or aware of your body there, you would probably be feeling exactly the same sensations that you're feeling right now from this bed beneath you. The only difference is the room around you is very different, but really that room is still there too. So it's this weird sensation like you're in two places at once that I don't normally have when I'm just wandering around a lucid dream. Number three, talk to a dream character and vent some of those personal things, those concerns or issues that you would normally feel are way too private to tell to another person. You know the kinds of things, the things that you might put down in a journal or someplace like that, but you would never actually say to another person whether it's just something really private and personal to you, or maybe it's something that you would have liked to say to a specific person, but now you don't have the chance. I think this is actually a step above journaling, or perhaps venting to a pet because you know they can't understand you, but it feels a bit good to actually say it aloud. I feel this is a step above those things because a dream character actually can and will respond to a lot of the things that you're saying. And sometimes their responses aren't much help, but sometimes your subconscious actually has some really good ideas that it can come out with when you start venting about your problems. Not to mention that it feels a bit better actually venting to what appears to be a real person in that moment. Even knowing that they're just an aspect of your subconscious, it still feels a lot nicer than just writing it down, for example. And try and be creative with this as well. You could just go up to the first dream character you see and start venting to them. But what about venting to a specific person? Maybe there's some figure, historical, alive or dead, that you think would give you great advice on this situation. Well, maybe conjure them up and vent to them and ask their advice. Or maybe you have things left unsaid to a particular person that you're no longer in contact with, either because you fell out of each other's lives or perhaps this person passed away. Well, perhaps conjure them and say those things that you've left unsaid all of this time. It might not change them knowing these things, but it can still feel like a weight off your chest being able to finally say them. Or perhaps if you're trying to make a decision on an issue, vent before several different dream characters, tell them all the same story and see if they all give you the same advice and the same responses, or if they come at it with different approaches that you can choose from. And now speaking of dream characters, number four, create a character for a novel that you want to write and then meet that character in a dream and learn more about what this character is like, not through the standard creation process, but through getting to know the character in your dreams, actually talking with them, asking them about their past, asking them about their motivations in life, what they want to do next, what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, what their struggles and fears are and then taking some or all of those ideas and incorporating them into the story that you're writing. Unlike the first three, which I've done plenty of times before, this one and the next two ideas are actually ideas that I have yet to try yet, but that I really wanna try myself. So this is something that I'm gonna be doing soon as well. And you can do this if you already have a set of characters that you've built up for some story that you're creating. You can then try and meet them and already know all of these things about them through your own creations but then ask them for more, ask them for information that you don't have about them, ask them to help you create the parts of your story that are still missing. A lot of writers do use a similar process to this even while awake, where they will essentially 
start imagining what their character would be saying as if they were conversing with them in their head. And in this manner, they'll let the characters essentially tell them what they would do in a particular situation. But this way, you're not just imagining it in your head, you're actually getting to see, experience, and hear them in person, which I think is a really cool way of doing it. Now, once again, with novels and dream characters, idea number five is in a similar vein, get dream characters to act out a scene from a novel, whether it's one that you're writing currently or just one of your favorite books that you've read. Get to see an in-person version, a live performance of one of your favorite scenes from a book that doesn't have a show or movie or any kind of adaptation like that. I'm sure any of you who read here can already think of at least one or two books that you would love to have seen a movie of or a show of because the concepts in them were just so unique and interesting that you'd love to see how people would envision that. Well, now it's your chance to be the director. Now it's your chance to make that scene a reality and see what it would look like to your subconscious mind and to you. And who knows, maybe at home you're actually someone that does make movies. Maybe you make short films or maybe you're actually trying to make some kind of feature length film. Well, maybe you could use this to actually help inspire it before you create it. Now on that note, thank you for sticking around to the end. So as a thank you, I am gonna give you that sixth bonus idea for what to do in a lucid dream. Before we do that though, I wanna really quickly plug my book because if you've listened to any of these ideas and felt like it's currently a little bit above your level of experience in terms of dream control, then you'll really enjoy the dream control chapter in my book where I detail different methods that you can use as well as how to even create your own dream control techniques. So if you wanna check that out, there's a link in the top right hand corner or down in the description below. In the book, you'll also learn about a whole lot more from how to get lucid in the first place to how to get lucid more often with various different aids to troubleshooting common issues like not getting lucid very often and so on. You can find more about what's actually in the book on the actual page for it itself. But for now, let's get on to number six. Number six was inspired by the fact that I've been loving these AI art tools recently, especially Stable Diffusion. I've been using it to death every single day, over and over and over, and I'm just in love with the images that it can create. So I had the realization a while back that, hey, this is almost like our mind's eye in a way, that AI art is taking a string of text and it's generating an image from that in the same way that we can read something in a book and envision it, um, assuming that you don't have something like aphantasia that affects that. So it occurred to me, if we're thinking of AI art tools as almost like a virtual version of the mind's eye, what about looking at lucid dreams as almost like a 3D immersive version of these AI art tools and using them to create lots of beautiful and intricate and interesting scenes from an artistic perspective. In other words, see the dream as your canvas. Rather than going in there to act out an adventure or do something like that, use it as a time to create some art shape the scenery into what you want it to look like, arrange the dream characters in certain ways, have them act things out for you like in the previous idea, create a bustling alien civilization like nothing that you've seen before on Earth, or maybe build your own fantasy version of the lost city of Atlantis. The sky's the limit. In fact, the sky is not the limit. You can go way beyond the sky, way out into space, wherever you wanna do this. Approach it the way you would if you were creating some AI art and try and get as intricate with it as possible. See if you can get your dream to create things in the style of a particular artist or to combine different styles and different keywords and so on when you're actually describing to the dream what you want it to create because you can use language like this as well when you're summoning things. You can tell the dream specifics about the things that you want to appear. You can say something like, around this corner, there's going to be this and this and this. And then you can take this process and do it in reverse. So once you've created your epic scene inside the dream, what about taking that and recreating that in some form of art in the real world? Now, if you're already a talented artist, you could paint this, you could draw this, you could make some digital art of it. But if you're not, then you could just go to one of these AI tools and see how close you can get to a recreation of what you saw in that dream. Obviously, it's gonna be more like a photograph, a little snippet of that scene, but see what you can do. See if you can get close to it. And this will be a way to brush up on your AI art prompting skills, as well as to develop your lucid dreaming skills at the same time. Now, I hope you've enjoyed these ideas and found them helpful. If you aren't already, make sure you subscribe and enable all notifications so you can stay up to date when our new videos come out. And if you wanna keep watching right now, check out one of the videos on screen, go watch that and I'll see you there soon. Take care and have some awesome lucid dreams.